This is March 25, 1986. Julie Strong interviewing Mrs. Ada Arnold, who lives in Austin, about black entrepreneurs in Austin around the turn of the century. Mrs. Arnold is 93 years old. What we're doing here? That's right. Mm -hmm. His name was W. A. Trinkman. I didn't see him there. Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, did he did he resolve your case for you about the Waxahachie property? Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, he did. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, we called them Mama and Papa. Oh, they yeah. married in 1916, I believe. Uh -huh. Well, that's pretty incredible, isn't it? <laughs> well, did you know Charlie Trinkman, his son? No, I didn't no, know you him. didn't know any of them. You didn't keep up yeah, with them. I just know him. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, tell me uh, something about yourself. Were you born here in Austin? Oh yeah, right down the street here. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. well, right out here in Montopolis, then. Yeah, I don't, I mean, there's a called the old Wilson Farm. It's, uh -huh. it's bomb now. Uh huh. I born there. And, and, when I left that, I, I, this is the spot where I landed in. My parents brought, that's my, uh, my old home place across the street. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when were you born, Miss Arnold? 1892. 1892. Mm -hmm. Wait. Mm -hmm. Were your parents from Austin? Uh, what, were yeah. your parents from oh, Austin? Oh, they were all Travis yes. Uh-huh. Austin. But by then, they had come into the city. Oh, yeah. What did your daddy do? He was just a farmer, mm -hmm. you know. And after he left the farm, he just, you know, worked around. Uh-huh. Well, after you all came into the city, did your daddy still own his farm out in Travis County? No, he didn't own the farm. Oh. We just, uh, you know, the work, uh, really land. Uh-huh. You know, we're third and Tenant fourth and all the halves. Uh -huh. Some people worked on the halves and some worked. A third and fourth, they call it. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> you don't know nothing about it. <laughs> no, I'm kind of ignorant. Aren't I? Is that called sharecropping? Is that what they mean by sharecropping? Yeah. Is that what they mean by sharecropping? You worked a share of the farm? Well, that, that's what I mean. On the halves. Uh -huh. really. But third and fourth, you, you'd work. And, you know, they took so much in using this. Right. So you each took your share of the, uh, yeah, of the produce. Yeah, I guess that's what you mean. I can't explain it. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, well, where did, did you go to school here in Austin? Yeah, I went to school right up the hill. I was my beginning of school. They had a school up on the highway. What was it called? Uh, Birdie's Prairie School. What was it called? Birdie's Prairie School. Birdie Prairie School? School. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And then... Uh, we uh, uh, they moved from there, and they uh, well. First, I started school. It was over in what we call the woods, over near the cemetery. Near the which cemetery? The Bush Perry Cemetery. Uh huh. And so from then they moved it. They come out on the highway here to build the school. No, they had the church that had the school in that church. Uh huh. And then the county built a school across there for the colored people. Uh -huh. You know, across the highway up there. And what was the name of that school? Do you it remember? Is, they still call it the Bush Fair School. Okay. Uh huh. What they changed it or not. Okay. But anyhow, they couldn't keep a school on that highway because of people. They just kept it burning down. They what? They kept burning it down? Yeah. Who burned it down? I don't know. The, the white folks didn't want the colored folks on that highway. Is that a fact? Now, what highway are we talking about? It's up right at 183. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And uh, they kept going. And so. They built a school up there next to our church. And where was that? What do I know what they call that school? Yeah, James? 
That's right on the next to our church, the St. Edward Baptist Church. Uh -huh. and, next uh, to the St. Edward's Baptist Church, uh -huh. did you say? Our church sold the portion of that ground to the school. I see. And, uh, James! Mary! I want to ask James what they call I, th I think they changed the name of that school. You know. Okay, so that was the name of the school that was built after the one it on the highway was burned down several times. Yeah. You know, it was first down there on the highway. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a school for youngsters. It was an elementary level school. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Did it? I went you did. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did it have grades for all age students? Did it go? Yes, on? it went from the first to the seventh. Uh -huh. When did you go to school there? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. How old were you? About. I was Okay. When? How old were you when you went to school there? What years? Uh, yeah. So if you're 59 now. That means you were born in 1925. So you were attending there in the 30s. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. But it was built when Ms. Ada was going to school. At that no, time. That, no. And that last school I'm talking about, no, it is built. See, our church sold them that ground. Why they built that school? I don't know what it is. Okay, so you were already out of school when the church sold the ground for the school to be built. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it was established long I after was, your school day. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Come on, I was just telling you the thing. Yeah. I went on down. Uh-huh. And, uh... Well, you, but you remember when the little school where you went to school was burned down. That's what I talk about. No, 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 I wasn't even going to school when the, and I went over there by the cemetery. That's my stuff. All right, let's figure out when the school was burned down several times that you're talking about. Let's, let's figure out approximately when that would have happened. You were already out of school, is that oh, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. About how old were you when you remember that school <laughs> being burned? Uh, Can you think of some incident that happened in your life that you could tie it to? Were you married when that school burned down? I don't think so. You think it was before you were married? You were mm -hmm. married in 1922. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was burned down. I don't know. Yeah, they couldn't keep the So it was burned down several times. The first time, I think it was burned down twice. See. Okay. Neither time were you married. I mean, well, you were not married at, at the time that the school was burned either time, is that correct? No, I the first time I wasn't, but the last time I was married. I don't think I was the first time. Okay. But I was, I, I wasn't even going to school. But the last time I was not. Well, was this, do you, at this time, do you remember any other types of events that, that say, were racially inspired? Or oh, yeah, that was the whole issue. Uh-huh. The it down. Uh-huh. Did the KKK burn that school down? Was there ever any talk of that? Is there any was it, was Did the, the Ku Klux Klan? Oh, burn that school? No. no. Well, the white folks just didn't want no Negroes on that highway. Uh huh. I understand. They used to own all that highway on both sides. Uh huh. But the white folks are the, are the blacks. The blacks. Blacks. Uh huh. They finally got them off that highway. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm just. How did they get them off the highway? Did they buy the land? 
Yeah, they buy, they, I don't know, they, they bought the land. And they just, cause down there where that Callahan store, that, you don't know where it used to be an auction. No. Mm-mm. Right. Go ahead and tell me. Now, my, my uh, uncle owned all that. Mm-hmm. But he, see, it's a bit, now, as the older ones died out, these young ones just sold. Sold you know? the land. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they finally got a mail to hang on to that. And school, burn it down. Uh-huh. <laughs> terrible, ain't it? <laughs> it is. It is. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. And I told him I, uh, where I worked at the, in the, yeah, I mean, I worked at, I worked at just the one time. And, um, and you know, the Negro, Maids up there, they couldn't take out the insurance black like white They oh, wouldn't really? give them the, the same, you know, the, the same the, amount of insurance. Mm-hmm. I can't you explain mean, it to you. But. Well, so the Driscoll Hotel would insure if this was a life insurance policy or a death, a burial? Life, but when men would come up there and take out insurance. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. You know but they'd, they'd sell insurance policies to the white women who worked up there, uh-huh. but they wouldn't sell it to the black women. Yeah, they'd sell it to them, but you couldn't get a bigger poly that says they could. Oh, tricky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's the way it was. Uh huh. You know, now, I'm telling you what I experienced now. Yeah, that's what nobody told me. That's what I want to hear. You so, know? when were you working at the Driscoll, Miss Arnold? Oh, God, that's you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm going to keep asking you this question. How old were you? Was it before you were married or after? Uh, oh, I, I was married then. Okay. I, that was in 25, I believe. Okay, 1925 when you were working at the Driscoll. Mm-hmm. And that's when you could buy life insurance mm-hmm. from people who came to sell it at the Driscoll Hotel. But they and, You know, agents come around. Right. And that, uh, but the colored people couldn't tell, check out the same amount of insurance uh-huh. as the way. Uh-huh. Did it cost? And have we eat? But you'd have to go in the back door. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. You could go in there and eat. And of course, uh-huh. we didn't think nothing about it. Uh-huh. Much because we didn't know we had to do it. And But you couldn't come in the front and go there and eat. Uh-huh. Well, what did the Negroes do about this business where they couldn't buy life insurance? It couldn't buy as much life insurance. Well, they just went on and took what they could. They went on and took what oh, they no, could. Oh, no, I did. <laughs> well, were there any other, organi- do you remember any other organizations that established themselves in order to sell better life insurance policies to blacks? No, I didn't think so. Mm-hmm. Were you ever a member of the American Woodman Association? No, my, my daddy was. Your daddy was. Mm-hmm. What did he tell you about the American Woodman? Hmm? What did your daddy tell you about the American Woodman? Well, I don't remember nothing he told me. I, mean, I just know there was a member. Uh-huh. Was it pretty common for the members of your father's generation to be a member of the American Woodman? I think so, because there's a lot of colored people belong to it. Uh-huh. Yeah. What kind of organization was it? Do you remember? Mm-mm. No. Only. When they died, I think they got five hundred dollars or something. I don't know, man, but just okay. Uh huh. All I know is woodmen. Uh huh. Do you remember any other people who were woodmen? No, no, I just know about my daddy and uh, my uncle, and his, my daddy's brother. But I don't know about. I can't remember about them. Uh huh. What were your What was your daddy's name? Will Edwards. Will Edwards. Edwards. Uh huh. And your your father's brother's name was John Edwards. John Edwards. Okay. Is the Edwards Baptist Church that you're a member of the, named the, after? That church is named after my family. Oh, it is. And that's because your family. My grandma. They organized that church in my grandmother's home. Is that a fact? Mm-hmm. When do you know? 1862. Woo! She got it on the nose. <laughs> 1862. Three. 
three, mm -hmm. the church was organized mm -hmm. in your grandmother's home. That's right. What was your grandmother's name? Rosa Edwards. Rosa Edwards. And who was the preacher who organized it? Now that I don't know. Where did your grandmother live? Well, she lived up there. You heard of Kensingville? Sure. She lived up there. had a home up there. Okay. And that, that was her home in Kensingville where the church was organized. Mm-hmm. What do you remember about that church? This is the St. Edward's Baptist Church, right? Mm -hmm. And it's still going on today? That's right. It's 123 years later. Mm-hmm. I tell you, it's historic. I tell you, but I've right. been trying to. We need a new church, uh -huh. and uh, I've been talking to Miss Betty Baker back. But we slowed us down. They're gonna uh, put a highway, and we think it's gonna take take your building, take the house down. Uh -huh. Come right through that. They say I don't know. Uh -huh. Will they pay you some money for that land? Oh, they paid money, but with that spot, we just hate to... Because it's historic. Mm -hmm. Hates to give it up. Mm -hmm. Well, when did that spot... When was the church moved from your grandmother's home in Kinchinville? I don't know, but they moved the church over there above the cemetery. Mm -hmm. That church, St. Edward's Baptist Church, uh -huh. was organized in my grandmother's home in 1863. And but my time, as far as I can remember, the church was over there by the cemetery. Uh huh. And <clears throat> that church, it's always shared. The Methodists had a son. They give it a message, you know, so many of Sundays. Mm -hmm. We were bad. Mm -hmm. And school. See, they went to school in this church too. You see. Mm -hmm. And so it served many purposes. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. Served as both church and school. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then they moved from over by the cemetery and and uh, in tw in twenty three, I believe. And they moved from the cemetery in nineteen twenty three. Is that moved right? it over on the this one on. The, on top of the drive. Okay. And right after you were married then. Mm -hmm. Moved it in that church. I don't forget to do it. Yeah, it might have been in it was in twenty three, but I'm trying to see. Yeah, I think it was in 23. What's that, 1923? Mm-hmm. Must be. But I know Reverend Harold was the pastor then. Reverend who? Harold, J.H. Harold. Harold. Mm-hmm. Okay. Harold. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the first I don't know. But I don't know. It's 1923. I think before we moved in this pre the present site. Okay. Um, what cemetery was the church located next to? What was the name? What, what, what was the name of that cemetery where the church was located for so many years? Oh, it was Bertie Prairie Cemetery. That's right, Bertie Bertie Prairie. B U R D I W T S. I still say W T. B U R D I T T S. Oh, T T S. Burditz Prairie. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, and that cemetery still exists. Is that right? Hmm. Is that cemetery? Is that cemetery still there? Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. All right. So you remember, you remember when your school was burned down, and it, you know that it burned down one time before you were married in 1922, and one time after you were married, and you just recall the two times that it was burned and you think it was probably burned by whites because they wanted to move the Negroes off the highway, mm. right? I, I said that, that yeah. and everybody that's else I said hear. that. Yeah, well, that's what I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so they finally just took it off the highway uh -huh. and put it over there by the, the county built school over there by the St. Edward's Baptist Church. Uh -huh. And uh, 
and then they broke that school up. They don't have, uh, I don't know what year they quit to have a school up there. Do you? I don't know that I wasn't in here. Yeah, I guess you. <laughs> I don't remember that. But uh, when you were born. <laughs> but they broke it up and uh, they offered the county office us the first choice to buy it back the ground. Mm -hmm. But we didn't do it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Wilhart, this on top of supply man, mm -hmm. he bought it. And they built a church of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's where it stands. Uh -huh. yeah. So it sort of remained a sacred spot, but it changed denominations, it mm -hmm. changed churches. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you remember an incident, and in, it was in the year 1919, it's called the Shillady Incident. What the book? Well, there was an incident, a racial incident that occurred in the year 1919, and it's called the Shillady Incident. And a man, a white man from New York, whose name was Shillady, came down. He was one of the organizers, or he was at least a member of the NAACP. And he came down to talk to a group of blacks here in Austin. And people were real afraid of what he was going to do and the impact he was going to have. Do you remember anything about this incident? This this man, this man Shillady, was beaten up. He came down on the train and he was beaten up. He was staying in the Driscoll and he went back home. He apparently died just a few years later as a result, possibly as a result of his injuries. And I was just wondering if you remember anything about that incident. No, it involved some men in the American Woodman Association. So, I don't remember about because yeah, I, I didn't pay much attention to it. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. But do you remember any other problems that blacks had in that early era? Any other racial incidents that your family was involved in or your community out here in Montopolis? No. Well, you know, always in my times, got along with them. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So, well, it, it was pretty I, peaceful between the blacks and whites. It was. It was pretty peaceful between the blacks and whites, as you remember, except for the school burning incident. Were things pretty peaceful among blacks and whites? Free. No, peaceful. 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 Um, pe peaceful. Peaceful. Y'all got together all right. Oh, yeah. They got along fine, you know. And, uh, you know, I don't hear too good sometimes. And people, they got along fine. A lot of the white folks that we live in, mm -hmm. you know. Except for the fact that they didn't want your school on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> my goodness, they couldn't take that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they said that, uh, you know, in the white schools that down down, um, called the old Ceiling Hill, and was down there, they was called the Colorado School. Mm -hmm. And they'd get out of school and they'd meet. Our children be going that way and, and, and something, and, 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 so they and they'd cross. fight. Oh, you the know. children would fight? Yeah. 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 Well, did you participate in the fights, James? Yeah, I did. Yeah? <laughs> and you got in a few punches. I'd be born and then we'd get out of school at the same time. Uh -huh. And that would make these guys and stay down and down. And they'd meet up. Uh -huh. and some of them went to come to school. They had to come to school up here and some of them had to go to uh -huh. So what two schools are we talking about? We're talking about the white Colorado, Colorado, Colorado school. school. And the one you're talking about here. But, but it's one the Montopolis mm -hmm. Black School. Okay, so these kids would get out at the same time and they'd cross mm -hmm. paths. And so that's mm -hmm. where the remedy is. <laughs> All right, now you mean some, some? What do you mean they meet these guys? Meet, uh, they, Are you the, talking about the school kids children? Would go to school up here, uh -huh. the white kids, uh -huh. and be coming home. Yeah. And the kids would come out of that out and come up up here, they had to go back home, and they meet up. Uh -huh. They got out of school at the same time, and they had to meet them up. Uh -huh. On that highway up there. Mm -hmm. So finally, they just uh, made them start turning them out uh, 30 minutes early. <laughs> and 
<laughs> Keep those kids from going at it. Yeah. <laughs> well, so this would have been when you were in school mm -hmm. as an elementary school kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the 1930s, they were still yeah, having those right. same problems. Yeah. But they, they, they like to the, you know, the color folks used to on both sides on that 183 tree. Got out. Wait, it wasn't a white family nothing. Oh, well, that Montopolis Supply, my auntie owned that. Really? Yeah, you know, uh -huh. my, my, it, you know, she was just my auntie by marriage. Uh -huh. They owned that. And uh, it was just colored mm -hmm. up from down, down was the Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. All that was colored, you know. And all got clean down to that Thompson Lane was colored folks mm -hmm. on either side. Uh -huh. Except, you know, over on this to the right side, while there's a white family, the Gersh place. That is white. That's the only white family in there. What know. was their name? Gersh. Gersh? Uh -huh. Can you spell that for me? Uh. <laughs> okay. G. I don't know. I might not be calling it right. But I know all I can remember that family was that. Mm -hmm. and, and all the other, that was colored. And same way on that one top of this drive, what a school. On one side, on that right side, one but nothing but colored folks. Mm -hmm. And on the left side was all what? what? Do you have any idea how long the black folks had owned that land and when they came in? Who? How long had those black folks been on that land? Oh, the the the, the price. Oh, red. I guess I don't know. I can't go back because ever since I know that there was uh, Uncle Jim Waters and, and the price and all. They right. Tell me the names of some of the black folks who owned the land down here. Huh? Tell me the names of some of the black families who owned the land that we're talking about. What, on that, on that highway? Yeah, the black-owned land that you were just talking about. Uncle uh -huh. Jim who? Uh, Jim Water. W-A-T-T-O-U-S? W-A-T-E-R-O-U-S. Okay, Waterus. W-A-T-E-R-O-U-S. What's another name of a family? That yeah. Black family. Price. Price? Price. P-R-Y-O-R. Prior. Okay. Prior. Uh-huh. And... John Edwards. John Edwards, your family. Well, this was sort of a black colony then. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, that's three. Uh-huh. Got to check my tape recorder and make sure I'm still moving. Yeah. Um, okay, let's move on to Thomas Delashwa, since that was the reason I'm supposed to be talking to you, and we've kind of gotten interested in other things. <laughs> uh, tell me how you know Thomas Delashwa. Well, uh, I went. I went to Sam Houston. Mm -hmm. I, now, what what grades were you in Sam Houston? When I, when I went, mm -hmm. I left here. Out here, they went just for the eighth grade. I went there. Uh, the, in, you know, in the eighth grade. Yes, ma'am. And then, uh, 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 I, uh, the teacher Ben Lee, he was teaching me out here then. Uh -huh. And I, I room they took me and you know and I lived with them. Uh huh. Then and went to Sam Houston. Uh -huh. So beginning in the ninth grade, you went to Sam Houston. Uh. You finished the eighth grade out here at Montopolis, uh -huh. right? Uh huh. And uh, so I. Uh, Oh. <laughs> no, I wasn't but to ask me something. I wouldn't know about 
I lived on, uh, we've been leading them on Olive Street. Olive Street, okay. And then uh, the way I met him, he lived on Juniper. Uh-huh. They lived down there on Juniper. There wasn't no, I guess about a block distance or something like that. Uh-huh. But, you see, we contact one another all the time because he went to Sam Houston. And I met the Tillerson, and I went to Sam Houston. Uh-huh. And so that's where we met. Um, I want to know why students, what was the difference between Tillotson and Sam Houston as schools? Well, Tillotson, I don't know the difference. Only Sam Houston was run by a Methodist organization, they said. And what about Tillotson? I don't know. I can't tell you. Okay. Okay, so... Um, then you and Thomas Delashwa got to, got to know each other because you lived close to each other in the same neighborhood, mm -hmm. even though you didn't go to the same school. Mm -hmm. but, well, what did y'all do together? What did what? What did you all do together? Well, but nothing. We were just friends, mm -hmm. you know. Contact one another and talk. Just friends. Mm -hmm. You know, we kept friends until he died. You know, really? just kept up with one another. Really? You know, uh huh. Because. You know, we've got the only oldest people, there's three of us, Homer Halls and Thomas the last ride. But the oldest people that was left around here, and we just called one another and uh -huh. just kept up with one another. Homer who? Halls, H-A-W-S. H-A-W-S. Is he still alive? No, he passed last, last year. Uh -huh. Okay, so you and Thomas maintained your relationship throughout his lifetime. Uh-huh. Kept in contact. Tell me what kind of person Dr. Delashwa was. Well, he was a nice person. He run a, 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 what do you call it, a pharmacy here in Austin. A uh -huh. business. He was a businessman. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. What do you remember about his pharmacy? Anything? Oh, I know he had a nice pharmacy. And he had an ice cream Parlor and one in there because I put a police going and sit, you know, and do it. Uh huh. What did what did he call his ice cream parlor? Did it have a name? Yeah. It, it was in the well. It was, it was on to the pharmacy. It was what? On to the pharmacy. It was at the back of the pharmacy. In the front. In the front of the pharmacy. Yeah, he sold ice cream and uh -huh. stuff, but uh -huh. uh, I've <laughs> been so long. I know, <laughs> I know. I'm just going to try to pull some of these things out of you. <laughs> Do you remember the name of that ice cream parlor? Did it have a name? Did the ice cream parlor have a name? It seemed like it did, but I can't think of it. Does the name La Palme ring a bell? La Palme. Huh? La Palme. Does that ring a bell? Is the name of the ice cream parlor? Palm Inn. Palm, something about a palm. Palm Annex? There's something about a palm, but I can't remember now. Palm Gardens? I don't know. <laughs> But I remember him talking about the farm. You used to talk about that farm, so. Uh-huh. But I don't know. Okay. Well, what did he used to talk about the palms? What did he say about palms? Just, you know, just get to talking back about, you know, things, you know. He was on 6th Street after a year. Uh-huh. He was at 421 6th Street. He was on the corner, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Well, do you remember that um, Thomas Delashwa had a baseball team? Baseball team? Uh-huh. No, I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't go uh -huh. there. Uh-huh, I know. But I remember he went to the Army. Oh, he did go to the Army? Mm-hmm. He was a, seemed like he was a, a doctor, a captain, one of them. I, uh, I don't know. Yes. Been so long, mm -hmm. like you know, other folks stuff. <laughs> but I, but the, he went to the army. Mm -hmm. I think he said he was a captain or a doctor or something. 
What do you? What do you? Well, he's a doctor. Uh huh. He was a pharmacist. Yeah, a pharmacist. That's right. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So how long was he gone in the army? Do you have any idea? No, I don't know. Did he go overseas? Mm -hmm. I think so. You think he went overseas? Mm -hmm. That's the only time we lost we lost contact with him. Uh huh. Did he ever tell you where he went overseas? Mm -hmm. Only I know he went to the army. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. What did he think of the army? Of his army experience? Did he ever tell you? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, did you think of Dr. Delashwa as a big businessman here in town? Yeah, he was. He had a big business on 6th Street in them towns. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Well, who, um, who was as big a businessman as Dr. Delashwa in those times? Black businessmen. Okay. Who were the kingpins? Oh, well, okay. Uh, 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 Tears. Mr. William Tears. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh, who else? Uh-huh. And, uh, uh, Dr. Vivians. Uh-huh. Um, Dr. Crawford. Now that's for the back. <laughs> Then uh, Gibbons, you know, mm -hmm. Dr. Crawford, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Leitner. Dr. who? Leitner. Leitner? Leitner? Or Lightning? Leitner. Le Leitner. What was it? I don't know which. But he was a rather interesting older doctor for that. Uh -huh. What do you remember about this Dr. Leitner or Lightning? I just, all I know is this doctor. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I never did use him. Who did you use? Uh, I didn't use nothing. <laughs> you never got sick, huh? I, I, one thing God was good to me, I stayed all my way. I worked out about 70 years when I quit to work. Really? And, uh, I stayed healthy on mm -hmm. the job. I don't mm -hmm. understand these young folks now. They don't stay on a job. Mm -hmm. If you got to work, we just stay there and get used to equating the day. Mm -hmm. well, I don't see no use in jumping around. Yeah. Don't see? Yes. Uh, I stay on a job. Um, so you never really had a doctor of your own, huh? You didn't need one. Mm -hmm. What about a dentist? About who? What about a dentist? Did you ever go to a dentist? Uh, no, but I need to go now. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't wait. But they just went, I'm wearing out. This was breaking off. Really? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Do you? You bet. You bet. Uh, Ms. Arnold, do you remember a, a, a lady dentist named Sarah Shelton? Mm -hmm. What do you remember? I, I remember, but I, I don't know nothing about her. Uh -huh. How do you How do you know anything about her? How do you remember? I just heard him talk about her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did people say about her? Was it no that no that the woman, you know, did it. Uh -huh. yeah. Was that did people seem to be pretty surprised that there was a black lady dentist in Austin that early? Yeah, in the, the, in the when the first come out about it, they act like they were surprised. Uh huh. Just wore down, uh -huh. but I didn't pay no attention. Uh -huh. Got used to the fact. Mm -hmm. You know that she was the first lady dentist in Austin. As far as I can tell, the first lady dentist in Austin was black. Mm -hmm. That's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. She was early. She graduated from dental college in 1910 mm -hmm. at a time when few blacks were going into the medical profession. Her name was Sarah Shelton. Sarah Shelton. Okay. Yes, yeah, she's, she's a person whom I'm kind of interested in because mm -hmm. I can't find any other female dentist, white female dentist, who preceded her in Austin? No, I just heard of talk about her, but I don't know nothing about her. Do you know anything about a Dr. Jennings? 
Jennings. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, he worked in the, uh, uh, with, that's why Thomas DeLastro got started. He worked with this Dr. Jennings. He did? Mm -hmm. What kind of work did he do for him? Helped in the pharmacy. Uh-huh. So he worked for Dr. Jennings? Yeah. As a young boy? Uh-huh. Come up under him. Uh-huh. Well, how? Sarah, Jen Sarah Shelton. Sure. Uh-huh. S-H-E-L-T-O-N. Now listen, you can learn more about Sarah Shelton if y'all come to our exhibit. See, all this information that I'm collecting is going to go for an exhibit at the Carver Museum. And we're real interested in Sarah Shelton because we haven't been able to find any other female dentist in Austin before her. So you can learn more about her if you come to our exhibit. Okay. Um, what kind of relationship did Delashwa have with Jennings? With Jenny. Well, all I know that he just worked for him, you know. He, he, I guess, he just worked for him so long until he just held the business up. And when Jennings died, well, he just took over. I don't know how he, how he you know, but he came up with Jenny. Mm -hmm. Well, is it your impression that Jennings was real fond of Delashwa? Or that Delashwa was real fond of Jennings? Well, that I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what Delashwa's first job was? Mm -hmm. I don't guess I know that. Mm -hmm. How long did he work for Jennings? Do you have any idea? No, but it was a that long while. Uh -huh. I don't know. Uh -huh. But I know when he ended up, he ended up with the, the business. Mm -hmm. He sure did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't figured out if he inherited that business from Jennings or if he bought the building. I think he bought the building. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. They told me he bought it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Then I've heard him say he bought it. Uh -huh. Oh, really? You heard yeah. Dr. Delashwa say that he had bought yeah, the building. Yeah, he bought How did he buy that building? Where did he get the money? Or, well, he said some bank let him have it. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Did he mention the bank? No, I don't remember. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Well, what other businesses was Dr. Delashwa involved in? Well, I should come out of that business. Oh, he ran a barbecue place uh -huh. after he retired out of that. Mm -hmm. The barbecue place. What did they call it, James? What did they call that barbecue place? Is it Cactus Point? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. it, Cactus Point. Mm -hmm. um, was he successful in his barbecue business? Oh, they say he was. Uh -huh. Who is they? Huh? The people, when you say they say he was, you're just talking I about mean, people. I mean, I mean the people. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, did he serve blacks and whites in his barbecue oh, place? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Mostly blacks or mostly whites or just sort of Oh, like, a big a Spanish and all, they tell mm -hmm. me. So they just couldn't get away to go. He's a good cook. Oh, he was? Yes, uh-huh. How did he learn how to cook? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was a, a mama's child and, and he just uh, the only child. And uh, uh -huh. his mama taught school and, and he cooked a lot. You know, mm -hmm. other things like that. I said, oh, I don't know, I don't know. So he was kind of a mama's boy? Who? Huh? Was he kind of a mama's boy? Yes. Uh -huh. He was a mama's boy. He was crazy about his mama. He was. Mm -hmm. You think his mama spoiled him? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, well, what are your, what when you think of Thomas Delashwa, what do you think of him? Do you think of him as a political person, or a community leader, or a businessman? Well, what was I his biggest contribution? Well, I don't think he was much of a political person. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. I, I never did hear go much of a man. Okay. Well, how yes. was he best known? Hmm? How was he best known? Well, just a businessman. As right? a businessman? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Did he did he do much for his race? 
Do you think of him as a person who worked for his race in any way? I know he didn't go to church much. No. Not a church? <laughs> so, I, <laughs> I tell the truth. I like to tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, well, let's tell the truth. <laughs> that, I, that, 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 I don't know about him going to church much. <laughs> no, I know he didn't go to church. I've already been told that. <laughs> but I just wanted to make sure that that was true. Yeah. But do you remember any other stories about Dr. Delatra? Any other mm-hmm. things that you all did together? Did you ever go down to the picture show together? Down there on 6th uh, Street? No. We never have a show like that. We just know good friends. Uh-huh. Know good, you know, like that. 